Right, on to professional ethics or uh, standards of professional ethics, um, codes of conduct. As uh, previously noted, the, um, the codes of conduct, uh, because it deals with specific behaviors, uh, is in the category of deontological ethics. Uh, you know, do this, don't do that, uh, Ten Commandments type thing. So, um, the first one uh, that we're going to look at here is uh, no particular secret. Uh, this is Ethics and the Internet, and this is actually available to anybody, RFC 1087. Um, so it's, you know, part of the, the documentation of the internet itself. Um, uh, you can get it and look it up. You don't have to take my word for it. Uh, freely available. So, the, the primary tenet uh, in forming this is that access to and use of the internet is not a right but a privilege and therefore what you do on the internet uh, should be judged in that light that you know you do not have a right to use the internet in unrestricted ways and particularly ways that will uh, impact how and whether other people will be able to use the internet. So, um, any activity is unethical and unacceptable if it seeks to gain unauthorized access. You know, protect, uh, protect privacy, protect um, the, uh, the systems of the people who are using the internet. So, you know, uh, it, it makes access potentially available to any system of any user on the internet. So, um, you know, no, do not take advantage of this. Uh, that's kind of number one there. Um, disrupts the intended use of the internet. So, mass denial of service attacks, messing with uh, gateway protocols and routing protocols, um, trying to redirect people uh, to different sites, even if you are not um, intending to attack them directly by doing so. Uh, just, you know, they thought they were going here and, and you're sending them someplace else. So a, a number of systems which uh, on a commercial basis uh, farm you off to someplace else you know, you, you type in a URL or enter a URL or click on a link and you think you're going to one place and you go someplace else. Um, <clears throat> I mean, sometimes that is simply network management. But uh, you have to be a little bit careful at that point because, um, you know, is this actually the intended use given that, you know, people... Uh, think they're going one place and they're actually being sent someplace else. Um, so you need to to pay attention to those types of considerations. Uh, we need to try and ensure that we are behaving ethically and you know not misleading people. Um, uh, yes, as I say, you know, sometimes it's network management, sometimes it's it's necessary. Um, it is 
part of the intended use of the internet to ensure that services are available. Uh, but you know, just just be careful what you think of as administration, whether or not it actually uh, is. Uh, ways and resources. Um, now I have. Uh, particularly when we were in the uh, telecommunications and networking uh, area, uh, talked about various things that you could do on the internet. For example, you know, sending a message, uh, depending on what protocol you're using, to 255.255.255.255. Um, that uh, potentially could send a message to every machine connected to the internet. Now, it's it's actually these days unlikely to do that because uh, routers, uh, gateways, probably have that listed as, uh, no, this is probably not uh, acceptable because uh, 255 is, is basically, you know, every address on this range. So, uh, you know, four times that means every address on the internet. So, um, but it would be, you know, as I say, you know, it's, it's unlikely to work, but it would be unethical to attempt to do it and see what happens, you know. Oh, let's see what this would do. No, uh, that is unethical it's going to waste resources to no good purpose. You can test the theory uh, more easily on a local basis and see which uh, routing software does catch it and which doesn't. You don't have to do it on the internet itself. So, destroys the integrity of computer-based information. Yeah, we don't want to do that. I mean, you know, that's that's part of our, uh, you know, our, our three pillars. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. When we've talked about availability, you know, uh, disrupting the intended use of the Internet. Um, so, yeah, these are, these are the basics. Now, this is, <laughs> this is, um... Maybe you're thinking, okay, this isn't a, a professional code of conduct. Yeah, in a sense, it's not. It's, it's everybody who uses the internet, and that's not necessarily a profession. So, um, bad idea and choice of profession, but it, it does provide the, an, an example, and a, you know, a reasonable example of um, what a professional code of ethics is going to look like. And indeed, the next one is ours.